and in the search bar type MS SQL. Click on the second link which is a Microsoft site and it says SQL Server Downloads. Once the website is open you will see multiple options for downloading. Now we want to download the Microsoft SQL Server Express Edition and we are going to find that link at the bottom. So let's browse a little bit more. Alright. And here you can see it says download the free specialized edition. Here you can see the developer edition. The developer edition is totally free to use for development purposes. And the next one you can see is the express edition which we are going to download. Now the express edition we are downloading because it is totally free for commercial use. That means you can use this for development environment as well as production environment. Click on download and you will see the executable file has been downloaded. Click on open file. This will open up the download wizard. Here it is asking to select an installation type. There is three types available, basic, custom and download media. I'm going to click on custom so that I can show you all the options which are available at the time of installation. Once we click on the custom installation, we get this type of option. Here we have to specify the SQL server media download target location. So what you can do, you can click on the browse and then you can select the folder where you want to save the downloaded files. Also you can see over here, it says minimum free space should be available on the drive is around 6000 MB and the downloading file size is 278 MB. Now let's click on install. I'm going to fast forward the video so it will not take much time. Once the downloading is completed, the SQL installation wizard will automatically open. Let me close the browser. Now here you can see there are multiple options are available. Here we are going to click on the first link which is new SQL server standalone installation. Alright, so let's click on it. Here it says please wait while Microsoft SQL Server 2022 setup processes the current operation. I have fast forwarded the video. Now this brings up to the SQL Server 2022 setup. Right now we are on license terms and condition which we have to accept before proceeding forward. So just check it out the license terms and condition and click on the checkbox. Then click on next. Here it is checking for the global rules and then it takes us to the Microsoft update. I'm going to click on the checkbox. Use Microsoft update to check the updates. Alright. Now click next again. It is checking for the updates available. There are no updates available. It has bring us to the next window. This is a install rule window. It says operation completed. 4 passed, 1 warning. Here you can see it is giving warning for the firewall. So that is fine. Let's click next. Now the wizard brings us to Azure extension for SQL server. So currently we are not using Azure extensions. Therefore we are going to uncheck this checkbox. Alright, now click next. Now we are on feature selection window. Here you can see some of the features are already selected by default. The first one is the database engine service. On the right hand side you can read more about this feature. Here it says it includes the database engine, the core service for storing, processing and securing data. 
the database engine provides controlled access and rapid transaction processing. All right. So now let's quickly check the next one. SQL Server Replication includes a set of technologies for copying and distributing data and the database objects from one database to another and synchronizing between the databases for consistency. You can read more about it from the description box. Next is machine learning service and the language extensions. And the last one is full text schematics and the extension for search. After that you can see polybase query service for external data. I don't require polybase query service so I'm not going to click on the checkbox. At the last you can see shared features. There you will find local DB. In our scenario we don't require that one as well so let's proceed. Here you can see instance root directory, shared feature directory, shared feature directory x86. In front of that you can see there is a path. The path is for the C drive where it is going to be installed. Nothing to do over here. Let's click next. Now it is checking for any dependencies. All right. Now we are on instance configuration. Here you can see by default it is selected the named instance and our instance name is SQL Express. If you want you can also change this name with the name of your choice. On the top you can see default instance is also available to select. If you click on default instance then you can access the SQL server using the localhost or the computer name without the instance name. Now let's click next. This brings us to server configuration window. Here we have to specify the service account and the collision configuration. In service account Microsoft recommends that you use separate accounts for each SQL server service. There are total four types of service are showing over here. Database engine, SQL server launchpad, SQL full text daemon launcher and the last one is SQL browser. I'm going to go with the default account which are already been selected and I'm not going to make any changes over here. Click on the checkbox. Grant volume maintenance task privileges to SQL Server Database Engine Service. This privilege enables instance file initialization by avoiding zeroing of data pages. This may lead to information disclosure by allowing deleted content to be accessed. We are not going to do anything on the collation tab and we are leaving it as default. Now click next. This brings us to the database engine configuration window. First one is server configuration. Here we have to specify the authentication mode and the administrator for the database engine. Here you can see authentication mode. Currently windows authentication mode is selected. And the second radio button is for mixed mode. That means it will support both types of authentication. SQL server authentication and windows authentication as well. I'm going to select the second radio button mixed mode. Then I'm going to specify the password for the SQL authentication. Now remember the username for the SQL authentication is by default SA and the password you can enter of your choice. Let's click on data directories tab. The first one is the data root directory. The second one is the system data directory. The third one is user database directory. And the fourth one is user database log directory. And the last one is the backup directory. In front of it, you can see there is a path is given. So if you want to change the path of the location where the data is going to be saved, you can click on the three dotted button and select the drive. Once you have selected a drive, create on make a new folder, give it appropriate name. Like I have given it SQL data and then click OK. This way all the data will be saved in this particular folder. As you can see the entire location has been changed to the E drive. It's E colon SQL data and after that you can see MS SQL 16 that's a version number. You can see the other directories the path is very long so I'm going to shorten this. I'm going to remove the 
version number all right so now let's check it out the temp db normally we don't have to do anything over here so i'm going to leave it as it is next one is memory SQL Server can change its memory requirement dynamically based on available system resources. However, in some scenarios, you can configure the range of memory in MB that is managed by the SQL Server Memory Manager. For this instance, by separating the minimum server memory and maximum server memory. Here you can see, I have clicked on recommended. In minimum server memory, I am going to leave zero. And in maximum server memory, I'm going to enter 3000. That will be 3000 MB. I am entering 3000 because the total RAM on this server is 4 GB. So it will be best suited to our needs to enter 3 GB over here. Once we have allocated the RAM, we have to click on the checkbox where it says click here to accept the recommended RAM configuration for the SQL Server database engine. I'm going to click on the checkbox later. All right, now in the user interface, you don't have to do anything. Click on the file stream tab. Here also, we don't have to do anything at all. Let me click back on the memory tab. Here we have to click on the checkbox. Once you have selected the checkbox, you will see the cross icon has been removed. Let's go back to the server configuration and check all the configuration which we have done earlier database directories temp db memory user interfaces file stream all right now let's click on next button now the installation is in progress it will take some time for the installation so i'm going to fast forward the video so you don't have to wait for long All right, so the installation has been completed now. You can see everything is in green and the status shows succeeded. In the details, it says install successful. Click on close. And now we have to download SQL Server Management Studio. Basically, the SQL Server Management Studio is used to manage the SQL Server database. Let's click on this third link, which is Install SQL Server Management Studio. This will open up a browser. And from here, we can download the SQL Server Management Studio, also known as SSMS. Here you will find a download link. Click on the link to download. This is a simple download and installation so it won't take much time i'm going to fast forward the video so you don't have to wait for long once the downloading is completed click on open file this will open up the sql server management studio wizard it will take some time to open up so don't get panicked wait for a few seconds There we go, the wizard has been opened. Here it says Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio with Azure Data Studio. If you want to change the installation location, you can click on change and then select the location where you want to save. I'm going to click on install in C drive with the default location. All right, click install. I'm going to fast forward the video so you don't have to wait for long. Normally it will take two to three minutes for the installation.
All right, it says setup completed. All specific components have been installed successfully. Click close. Now let me show you how you can open SQL Server Management Studio and connect to the database engine. Close this. Okay, go to start. At the top you can see there are three icons. The third one is SQL Server Management Studio. If you don't see the icon over there, you will find the folder with the name Microsoft SQL Server Tools 19. There you will find SQL Server Management Studio. Click on it and this will launch the SQL Server Management Studio. As I am opening the SQL Server Management Studio for the first time on this server, it will take few seconds to open. Alright, so the SQL Server Management Studio has been opened. Here you can see the server name and then you can see the instance name that is SQL Express. Below that you can see authentication. So right now the authentication is selected which is Windows authentication and the user is administrator. Now I'm going to click on connect. We are connected to the database engine which we have installed. Click on the plus sign of the database directory. This is empty right now. Once you create the databases, you will be able to see it over here. Now I'm going to disconnect the database engine and then re-login using SQL Server Authentication, which is the second number. This is the one. All right. So I'm going to enter the user, which is SA. This is a default user. And then I'm going to enter the password. All right, you can click on remember if you don't want to type it again and again, click on connect and there we are logged in successfully using SQL Server authentication. Hello friends, thank you for watching our this video tutorial. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Also click on the bell icon if you want to receive a notification whenever we post a new video. My name is Sachin Sami and you're watching this video on YouTube channel Peter Kreis.